All right, hello everybody. Welcome back, Carl again. Today we're going to talk about do-it-yourself uh, PCBs, and this is just a procedure that I use. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, over I don't know about two years or so of making my own circuit boards, so I'm going to try to share some of my fails and some of my successes, and hopefully this helps you out. Now, if you look on YouTube, there's literally thousands of these videos about how to do your own circuit boards. So I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to give you a couple of my tips and some of my tricks. First thing I'm going to recommend you do is watch the video from Colin. He did a really good one through Jamco and it talks about how to do it. That was kind of the first video I watched. That gives you the basis of how it works. And then I'm going to run through what I do. So first of all, you'll see back here on this hot plate, I have ferric chloride. That's the etching I use. It's a glass dish. I found that if you heat the uh, ferric chloride, it actually goes a little faster. Over here in this tub, I have my developer. And then over here in this little tub in the back is my liquid tin. And this is an optional step, I'd say. This just coats the back of the copper to keep it from oxidizing anymore on your project. Now, ferric chloride is nasty stuff. It stains just about everything. It uh, eats your skin. So make sure you wear some kind of uh, nitrile gloves or some kind of gloves you get from the store. You can see here's a rag and it's just littered with ferric chloride residue. It just does not come off. Don't wash this in your washer because it'll run and then ruin all your clothes. Just let it go. This is an old like pillowcase I use that I just lay down so I, if I splash it, it doesn't bounce back up at me. So uh, what we'll do is I'm going to run to the computer, show you Eagle CAD, and then show you how we get to this step here. Okay, so this is Eagle CAD, and this is not a tutorial for Eagle CAD. Uh, I'll link in down below a good tutorial for EagleCAD how to use it. I will say this, there, there is a little bit of a learning curve with EagleCAD, but I encourage you to take the time and figure it out because once you do, it'll be make this process a lot easier. So here's my board I designed, and, and this will be a PWM driver board for driving zero to 10 analog voltage LED controllers. And this is going to use an Arduino. So this is an Arduino shield that has two op amps here. It has a voltage regulator, some terminal blocks, and a DC input jack down here at the bottom. Uh, but that's for a different video. You have to remove all the layers except for the, the, the layers you want to show, which for me happens to be bottom, pads, and vias. Now this button down here, this little green triangle, or excuse me, this green crosshair thing, is the rat's nest. And so that calculates... Uh, your basically your ground plane and what I have so what you want to do is you go to file you go up here to print and it brings this dialog box up now the important thing to remember here I don't know how well this is going to show up but you want to do mirror black scare factor is one and you want to make sure that it fits on one page you'll say okay and then what you'll end up with is this. This is my PDF file of my board. Now this just has just the traces. You take this to anywhere you want. You can do it yourself if you have a laser printer. But what I do is I go to Office Depot and for $1.06 I think is what it is, or it's 99 cent plus your state sales tax, you get this transparency printed. And the important thing when they print this, you want no scaling actual size that it is so we'll take this and we'll go back to the workshop and i'll be right back with you okay so now that you have the transparency cut out uh, this is where the tri the tips come in here this side is the photo etch side so underneath of this white layer is a pre-sensitized board and the way the process works if you don't know is you stick your artwork over top of the board you stick it in this frame and you shine fluorescent light on it for about 10 minutes what that does is that basically the UV rays from the bulb some process from the bulb maybe it's not UV causes a chemical reaction on that pre-sensitized board and what you do is you rinse, rinse it in the developer and the developer only etches away areas that have been exposed by light stick that into the ferric chloride ferric chloride etches away all those white spots and what you end up with is an etched board so, I always recommend, I didn't say this when we were at the video, but I always recommend to stick on the bottom some kind of letters. So you can see here it says RDF underscore PWM. 
Up top, I have a five. I also like to mark um, zero, so that's zero. That's for D zero. And then on the pens here, you'll see there's a one next to these op amps. That's number one pen. Because when you go to put it together, that's important that you know which is pen number one. Now, on this side, when it looks like this, you want to be able to read words. Because remember, this top side reading the words is what the board's actually going to look like. And this white side is actually your copper side. So what I like to do is just line it up, make sure you leave yourself enough slack, and then I like to take this straight edge so I can have a nice even mark of where it needs to be. So I'll pull that off and I just draw a line. And then I do the same for the bottom. Now I, I like to use the straight edge because I want to leave myself border on this thing here. I leave myself border on the artwork. You can see here's the artwork end here. And then there's actually the transparency end. That way I have something to type this to. Okay, so now you have this board. This is your outline. I'm going to cut this out and I'll be right back with you. Okay, before I forget, uh, this was the kit I actually bought. This is from MG Chemicals. I bought it from, I think, Electronic Express, perhaps, online. Comes in this little Rubbermaid-type container, and it, and it gives you a pre-sensitized board, a 3x5, a 4x6, and a 6x6. It gives you developer, ferrochloride, brushes, instructions, gloves, and the development tray, which is actually the tub that's in. And the part number is 416-K. I really like this kit, it has everything you need, comes in a nice plastic container. Now eventually you run out of boards and you have to buy more. This current board I have, I got is GC, and it was 12 by 12, and I paid $19.20 locally for it. So, back to the task at hand. Now that I have my board, I have my artwork here, here's the next step. Now. I don't know if you can tell, but on my board, on my uh, frame, I actually have wrote little uh, words to me. Now, the important thing to remember is that your copper needs to shine through like this, because you're gonna flip this over and this is where the light's gonna hit it. So, the reason why the words are important is so that you put this on the tray right. Now, in Colin's video, he talks about you print mirror so that way you have the artwork is printed on the um, this side and it's as close to the board as possible to help minimize any shadowing. Now, I have found that it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. The important thing is that you know which way it needs to go onto this frame. And the only way to know for sure is with letters. So you stick this so that you cannot read the words. Not able to read words is my little reminder. And I'm just gonna take a piece of tape and tape over the edges and you want to leave this as flat as possible and that just holds my artwork the next thing I'm going to do is turn all the lights out now I have done this in very dimly lit rooms usually what I do is leave a light on like in my hallway of my workshop just enough so I can see because I want to peel this layer off stick this down I'm going to then flip the board over and I'm going to verify that it all lines up because that's important. Once I get the fit, I once I get it exactly how I like it, I flip it back over and then I stick a piece of tape across this corner, piece of tape across this corner. I take the back to the, the mirror, stick it in, and flip it over. And by that time, I'll have the lights back on, so I'll bring you back in the video. So hold on just one sec. Okay, just a couple notes. I have this in here. One thing you want to be care, uh, cautious of is don't cut your circuit board really really big because remember the more copper you have to etch away the longer it takes that fair chloride to do that and then the less potent your fair chloride becomes over time also don't cheap out on the tape put nice big pieces of tape across you want to tape to the glass and then the other thing i like to do is have a microfiber cloth ready to go so i can just kind of dust off the uh glass so that there's no fingerprints or smudges so here is what it looks like you can see that I have a good outline. I left myself plenty of play because I, I want to make sure that all the uh, areas are exposed. Now, I'm going to leave this under the light for about 10 minutes. And the light that I typically use is just a 100 watt CFL bulb here in this light. Let me see if I can get a 
shot of that uh, right here. I'll turn that on and I do exactly as Colin described in the video that I watched he, he did six to eight inches away. Now I'm just typically a little more thorough so I actually like to measure and actually get about seven inches and I leave it centered just like that and I'll start the timer on my watch and give it about 10 minutes. Now the what's going to happen is the light is going to hit all those green exposed areas and it is going to basically desensitize that uh, resist and then when you stick it into the developer it'll actually wash away the uh, Presensitizedness from the board leaving just the copper and then when you stick it into ferric chloride the ferric chloride will eat all that away now I also if you also notice I have this nice big ground plane this black area there I did that because again the less amount of copper you have to etch the faster that it will go so we'll let this sit for about eight to ten minutes and I'll bring bring you back and I'll show you doing the developer step okay so it's been ten minutes and here is the product and we're gonna go ahead and pull it out of this picture frame and what we're gonna do is take the board off and stick it right into the developer now be very careful you don't want to try not to touch the presensitized side you might be able to make out the different colors I'm gonna stick it right into the developer Now it takes about, about a minute for this to develop, and I'm just going to lightly agitate it. Uh, other note is I went and got some fresh water. A couple other notes that I'll have, some tips that I have. Uh, the positive developer, I usually can get a good amount of uh, uses out of it before I have to get rid of it. The develop will actually start to change color once the... Uh, the resist actually comes off into the water so when it changes color you'll know that's the same with the ferric chloride right now if you look at the ferric chloride it's pretty clear and that's good that's uh, I think that uh, I've only etched one board in that batch of chloride as the copper starts to come off into this what happens is it will start to darken that water so when it gets real dark and obviously the less ferric chloride the longer it'll take to actually etch so let's see if we can you can see here the developing process you see it's starting to come it's starting to wash off one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to leave it in there too long but you got to make sure you leave it in there long enough and you'll know because um, I have just this little old bamboo stair I don't like to stick my fingers in this water uh, you know in the chemicals even though I have my nitrile gloves on I forgot to mention that you can see here in the middle where you still have some etch coming off, some photoresist, so you want to just keep it in there for that period of time. Takes about a minute. I usually leave my um, stopwatch going on my clock, so I have 10 minutes for the etching part, and then it takes me about a minute to get it in here, and then about a minute in the etching or so. Now it goes straight into, straight into the water. And that's it. Let me grab a towel. We'll dry it off. Now at this point, this is your board ready to go into the etching. You can look on this board and look for any little spots. So for example, down here, you'll see how there's like some residue left over. If we move that, you'll see there's actually still resist there. So if that was important, you got to make sure you get that off. And you can look, if you missed any spots, if there's something you want to darken in, you can actually darken in with a good Sharpie. Uh, you can fix traces, etc. with that. So I'm very happy with this. Again, I've been doing this for a little while now, so I've learned a lot of tricks. I'm going to stick this right into the ferric chloride. Now, you'll see it wants to float, so you have to kind of give it a little rocking. Now, I like to leave this on heat while it's doing this. Uh, this is an old uh, coffee pot actually and if I move this out of the way you can see I literally just sawed it right off so that the only thing that was there is the hot plate and I was gonna it was an old coffee pot somebody was getting rid of so I have nothing invested in it so if I throw it away tomorrow I don't care and it's gonna ruin whatever it is so I'll leave it on there I like to give it a little shake like this to kind of move the fluid around 
Uh, about every two minutes or so. Again, it makes a disaster of a mess. So don't do this in your kitchen. Maybe do it outside. And this is my workshop, so it's not a big deal. My wife won't be mad at me if I get this dirty. No metal tables. This stuff will eat metal. Again, I, here's the plastic tub I keep it in. Uh, that's plastic, and the liquid tin is plastic, but this is uh, actually a Pyrex dish. I just confiscated one. That way I can heat it, because you obviously can't heat plastic. Okay, so for a board this size, with that amount of copper to expose, it takes about 30 minutes to etch. So I'm going to stop the video here, and I'll be back with you. Okay, so we're at about, I'd say, 20 minutes in. I just want to give you a quick look. You can see it's just about done. There is just a couple spots, really hard to make out, that are left. So I'm going to continue to just kind of agitate this to try to keep it going. It's just about one little spot in the middle is left. Uh, the kit comes with brushes, and you can actually take the brush and try to brush off the uh, copper. I've never been a big fan of that. I'll just let it go. It doesn't take long. In fact, I'm going to actually turn my heat off. And it looks like we're done. So again, I don't like to stick my fingers in there. I'll use this little stick, give it a quick check, and if it's okay, I'll throw it into the water. So, there it is in the water. Again, I just give it a nice rinse. We'll dry it off. Let me throw these. Uh, don't throw your gloves away yet because you want to you got to clean this up but anyhow here it is done so you can see all of the copper is etched away we have the ground plane here and I am ready for drilling so what I like to do with my ferric chloride is I'll put this kind of to the side I'll stick this lid on it So that it's closed up. I'll let my heat plate cool off and then once this air chloride cool, cools down I'll stick it in there. Optional step. Have liquid tin. This is also available from MG Chemicals. What this will do is you can actually clean the resist away and you run the board through it and that kind of protects this copper. Now, I like to drill with the etch, so I'll actually come back after I'm done drilling and I'll do the, the liquid tin step. Okay, now, drilling. For drill that I've had success with here, for the, all the normal holes, I use 0 0.8. I use a 0 0.8 millimeter bit, and then for the pin headers, I use 0 0.1. The TO220, this here is actually a heat a um, voltage regulator or TO220 voltage regulator. For those, I usually use the 1.0. So all these kind of oblong holes, I use 1.0. The normal small holes, I use 0.8. Drill bits. Now you can go on eBay and buy them. Harbor Freight, it's like $3.99, you get this kit. You get five of the 0.8, three of the ones, two of the 1.2, two of 1.5, etc. Sometimes these bigger bits are useful. What I do is, uh, they're impossible to tell what size they are, so I have a digital micrometer. I just mic them up, and then I have a tray that I separate them into, and that way I always have them ready to go. Uh, the .8 bits, they do break. Uh, I've drilled a good amount of holes with these, but for three box, you can't go wrong. So I'm going to get this in the drill press, drill these holes, and I'll be back with you. Okay, so all my holes are drilled. What I like to do is the back here is kind of rough now from the drilling process because you drill from this side down. So I like to take just a fine file and I'll just kind of go over top of these holes. Uh, and what that'll do is smooth out the top and if there's any little burrs left, it'll just make it nice and smooth. The other thing is if there's something you want to write on here, so perhaps maybe you want to put like a serial number or something like that, my advice is do it now before you put all your components on. So what I'm going to do now is go through the liquid 10 process. So to get the resist off, you can just use acetone, which is, you know, fingernail polish remover. And I just 
put a little bit on the board. I take this little cotton pad and I will just wipe it off. Now when you hit it with the acetone, that removes all of removes all of the photo resist and you have a nice clean PCB. Now, liquid 10. Stuff smells kind of like rotten eggs. Take just a like a scouring pad not one that you use for food and once you use it for this don't use it again and it will just kind of clean this copper off and this will allow the liquid tin to, to uh, actually adhere to this copper once you scrub it don't touch it with your fingers you want to kind of get it looking like that I wipe the um, bottom side here of the board to get any little residue off and we'll stick it in the liquid tin uh, this takes about a minute and what we're actually going to do with this is this will coat that copper with almost like a silver plating so to speak and so we'll just move it back and forth and this will just help protect the copper uh, this stuff is not cheap so i just put a very little bit in this tin it's about eight dollars for a bottle about this size so i don't know maybe eight ounces a between you know eight and ten dollars something is pretty pretty expensive but you don't need a lot of it and I just reuse this as you can see I just put a little tiny bit in here and I'll just keep using this once I get it good I'll tilt it this way so I can get my finger here in the board let it drip off and we are done and you can see now that the copper has a nice silvery finish. Let me just grab a paper towel. Again, I don't recommend not using gloves as I just did. I would say you definitely would like one to wear gloves with all these chemicals. They come with MSDS sheets for a reason because they're not healthy for you to be coming in contact. Also, I have a window off camera you can't see that's open for my ventilation and there's a small fan behind me blowing the stinky stale air out so I can get some fresh air in. And that's it. Okay guys, well, any questions as always ask below. That's going to conclude this part of the video. If you're interested more about this board, I'll have another video coming out later on about what exactly this board is. This is the uh, LED driver uh, board and so I'm going to talk about that in another video. If you have any questions about Eagle Cat, ask them down below. A really good tutorial on Eagle Cat was given by Jeremy Blum. I try to remember to go ahead and link that in down below as well. He actually starts a project. I learned a lot from his videos and then just trial and error. And also, don't forget to use Google. You know, if you have a question about how do I do a ground plane, there's a specific video on how to do a ground plane, and that's just this big copper pad. And it takes a lot less time to etch this that way. So thanks for watching. Please hit that like button. That really does mean a lot. And it really helps me out. Lets me know that I'm on the right track with these videos. If you didn't like something, leave that in the comments below. Let me know, hey, you didn't mention this. And I do my best to answer all those questions right away. All right, guys. Thanks again.